Hey guys, Paulie Howard. I'm with Fox Sports Radio for the card Friday, March 17th. Before I tell you what I'm betting, time to rant run. There it is, day number one in the books. Only two higher-seeded teams won. You can't count Middle Tennessee because they were favored. What a great, what a horrible job. Great job by Middle Tennessee. Horrible job by the committee. They're no way, no how were they at 12. They are 31-4, and four, and they have beat two Big Ten teams back-to-back -back years and dropped 170 points on them. And they were up 17. Minnesota made their run. Upshot took over. Great game Saturday against Butler. And the winner goes to the Sweet 16. Uh, talked to Jay Cornegay at the Westgate and Tony Miller at the Golden Nugget. Books got destroyed there. Destroyed. Look at the parlay liability and what happened in the late games. Arizona and over. You had Iowa State and over. You also had Wisconsin and over. Gulf Coast goes over. Gulf Coast gets the money. The popular dogs got the money. Princeton, Wilmington, Gulf Coast, uh, Northwestern was a popular play as well. Bucknell, they all get there. The key decisions went against the books in that one. And uh, a wild day. And these numbers are so tight. And you see a lot of games come down to the final possession, the mad scramble. I mean, if you had the Iowa State game under condolences, just the foul, lay it in, foul, lay it in. And there was even the books got middle on that East Tennessee Florida total as well that I think opened 143 and a half and shot up to 148. And as we told you early in the week, you're going to see, we love the madness, but you're going to see some horrible decisions from coaches and players. Uh, what happened with New Orleans in the play-in game? And then I give you Matthew Fisher Davis, who thought they were behind in fouls when they're up one, at half court, Northwestern knocks down the free throws, and we've seen it twice already where a team is down one, last, last shot, and they take a three. Now, Princeton was up against it with the clock, but Vandy just jacks from the parking lot down one. Horrible. The way these guys, they call every foul in these games. It is so tight how they call, officiate these games, and you don't penetrate. You just shoot that, and Northwestern gets the big W. Congrats to Collins, Doug and Chris, Julia Louise Dreyfus, Elaine, her son is well on the team, and now they get Gonzaga. Gonzaga stunk. They were horrible, and they still won by 20. They have a nasty defense, and we'll see if Northwestern is still in celebration mode. Surprise at the number, too. Gonzaga's 10 and a half uh, in that one, and a wild day, but still only two higher-seeded teams won. And Xavier won. They're only uh, catching two. So Purdue screwed around at the end, missed some free throws, but they got there. Vermont had a big run in the first half. It looked like uh, East Tennessee State was going to get there. The Winthrop game was weird, too. There were some point spread hijinks in that one, at least a good sweat. Butler's up 20, dominated for most of the game. That opened 14 at the South Point. Uh, that went down 10 and a half, 11. Went off a tip, and they win by 12 as Winthrop made the run uh, in Villanova. Never had a chance to get the money there as well. And another bad game for the books, Virginia. Never led by more than eight. Won by six. Wilmington plus eight, eight and a half. Bet down to seven and a half. All that money cashed. And the Cavs missed a free throw on each of their last two possessions. Wilmington up 15 while we're doing the radio show with Koken. And then a huge run from Virginia of all teams. Up 15 against Virginia is like up 25 against anybody else. But I'll tell you, there was that Gulf Coast game was fun to watch. There was a track meet. They hung in there, knocked down some shots, a lot of dunks. And the North Dakota, standing ovation for North Dakota. They would have won a game if they were properly seated and they didn't see, didn't see Arizona. Markinen, the bigs. Too tough down low. You could see early on Arizona was going to get what they wanted. But North Dakota ran out of gas. For the first 30 minutes, they're in there. That's a seven-point game. North Dakota's in that thing. And with Hooker, they got some good guard play. That was a good team. There's no way that was a 15 seed. No way. And that was fun to watch. Uh, how about a bad bet from the NBA? The Knicks bet up to five at home against the Nets. They lose. And the Nets snap a 33-game road losing streak to Eastern Conference teams. All right, bright and early. Friday, Friday morning, Oklahoma State, Michigan. Let's do this again. Time to tell you what I'm betting. A couple big feature pro picks over my shoulder and up a pregame. Dave Vesser on a nice run. His game of the week. Locked in, loaded, ready to go Friday off a good day Thursday. J.R. O'Donnell, a 15-6 college basketball run. Get that play over my shoulder as well. And last but not least, Greg Shaker on a 20-6 total streak. His picks available all up at pregame. Winner with East Tennessee State. Over. Nothing today. Pros can agree on a game. Look for something on Saturday. He's always betting half a unit on the free play. Let's take Butler Saturday. Now, I know what happened last year. It's going to be a different team uh, Saturday, but after they beat Michigan State, Middle Tennessee was run out by Syracuse. Uh, they'll be in this one with a good chance to win, but I think there's good value on Butler laying three and a half Saturday against Middle Tennessee. That's the free play. 
I've ranted. Now I'm going to run. Good luck out there. Murderers Row today on the radio show. Malinsky, Powers, and KT all over the phone. Talk to you Saturday on pregame.com.